Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of The Blacklist, Season 9, Episode 2, The Skinner. Conclusion. We have conclusion, <laughs> everyone. We know who the new Skinner is. We got a lot to talk through here. Yeah, we do. There was a lot more sort of just threading together some of the mysteries of what's happened over the past two years with this big time jump. And also just kind of opening up some other mysteries like why does Panda Baker hate Cooper so much that she's going to use words like loathe at him? Like, what happened there? Yeah, there's Panda Baker's got some issues going on that we 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 need some answers on Panda Baker. I think we need some answers on Reddington. Like, it, we actually do have a couple of new mysteries <clears throat> that are set up here. Yeah, we will talk through some of them, but of course. Check out that subscribe button if you love our coverage of The Blacklist. We have a lot coming up still. And also, some other great shows. Succession, every Sunday. We are mm -hmm. here talking all about that. Yeah, Dexter's coming up soon. Yellowstone, we're going to be covering that as well. And follow us over on our Instagram, Matt and Just TV. We have some new Halloween pictures up Ooh. there. All right, so where do you want to start? Do you want to start with Panna Baker? I mean, there's a lot going on over here. Yeah, okay. Let's just start with this. Senator Panna Baker, <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Number one, like, was this a situation where, like, she was elected? Like, the, I, I just want to picture in my head Cynthia Panna Baker being in front of an audience. Like, she's totally one of these people who would, like, get, like, super folksy on the campaign trail and would show up with, like, a... I don't know, like yeah. some like old school vest and be like, I remember back in my day, we were, I, I could see, <laughs> give me an episode of that. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's not too surprising that that is where she is. It was surprising to see how icy of a reception she had to Cooper. What happened there? Like, honestly, I know that she put up the burn notice, she dismantled the task force, but we didn't see any sort of like massive fallout where she could be angry at him or disappointed or like, okay, things didn't end that well, but loathe. Ooh, like it was just, it felt really, I don't know, a bit out of character for her. She's someone who's very smart, has a sharp tongue, but like, I just don't know what could have happened to break that relationship so badly that she would basically hate him. This is my theory on it right now. I could be totally off, but I, right. I kind of feel like at some point over this last little while, Panda Baker obviously decided that she was going to run for Senate or have mm -hmm. some way to get into like that part of her career. Mm -hmm. And it certainly seems already like she was more than fine to throw Cooper and the entire task force under the bus. And maybe Cooper, I don't know, at some point during this process was, okay, if you're going to throw me under the bus, I'm going to like grab you and I'm going to drag you under the bus with me. And maybe she was just like... Oh, no, 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 you aren't going to be able to do that there, Cooper. And then she finds a way to get herself out of the situation. Yeah, it's possible. One of the things that she did bring up while she was having this exchange with him is that he's some sort of mouthpiece out there still. So it could be something like that. I mean, I, I hope that they're going to touch more on that. Yeah, it also seems, and we didn't know this for sure, but it doesn't seem like Panna Baker has any role directly in Dimbe being an FBI agent. Like, she suggested that Cooper found a way to pull some strings to make that happen. Yeah, which is something that we talked about already. We talked about that in our preview for this episode, that maybe Cooper greased some wheels because, you know, Dimbe being a special agent, it's... It's hard to believe with him running with Reddington for so long and all the things that he's been, you know, participant to that the background check wouldn't have been like, no, we understand you want to be an agent, but I'm sorry. It needed to have a little bit of, you know, grease in the wheels. It is weird to me that it took me longer to get a degree in English than it took Dembe to become an FBI agent. I'm, ju I'm just saying. Yeah. The okay, there's even more with Panna Baker here. Yeah, I don't understand like her decision making on something. So she gives Cooper the post office back, at least to some extent. It to was work on cool stuff. to see that back in action. It was kind of sad to see it all covered up and stuff, but it was cool to have it back. 
yeah, like I loved having the post office back. I love that nostalgia. But then, like at the end of the episode, all of a sudden, Panda Baker is just sort of like, "Yeah, that's fine. We'll go ahead and reinstate all these people." Yeah, FBI for everybody. <laughs> Let's get this all back. It, it was strange, and I mean, we saw Reddington sit down with her and sort of say, "I'm going to give you something. You know, you're going to give back the post office." all the FBI agents are going to be back, like you're going to give all this back. But we didn't really see or hear what it was that Reddington was offering her. And we do know that these two episodes were all about these microchips. We saw Panna Baker tell Cooper, oh, you happen to have all the, the software that we need for this stuff? Well, what, you're going to give it back? How about you give it to me <laughs> and we'll keep it here in America where Cooper said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. That's not happening. Now we do know that Reddington is now the new Skinner. Yeah. Is it possible that he's offered her that program and that information and him as a Skinner might be able to get his hands on it because now it's even sort of more of a deep and long history of criminal organization the skinner's tentacles might be a little bit deeper than raymond on his own it's like 700 years or yeah. something that, that's very well possible because that to me was like one of my big burning questions coming out of this it's just like panna baker you made such a meal out of getting rid of this task force and i know a lot of it was because like everyone in this task force was horribly compromised with how much they cared about liz and i know liz, i know liz is dead and all of that but you don't suddenly be like oh you guys aren't going to be compromised now for whatever reason you're going to be good clean fbi agents let's give you guys a reinstatement yeah it just it doesn't make a lot of sense unless this is reddington gave her something related to that software or gave her something else. Maybe this will be something that's explored down the road. But for for me, the big mystery that I'm sort of now kind of wrestling with is why does Reddington really want to be the Skinner again? Like why? I mean, not again, but he's never been the Skinner. Yeah. But why does Reddington want to like dip his toes back in this pond just out of seemingly out of nowhere? It feels like it's all circling back to Agnes, which is something that I was truly hoping was not going to be the case. I mean, she's got to be like, what, nine years old now? Someone, yeah. she's already being protected. People are already watching her. You know, nothing is happening to her. There's lots of, you know, bad people around and there's been no attempts on her in all these years. She's been fine yeah. so the idea i guess i don't know it kind of hurts my heart that her as such a young young girl with her whole life ahead of her to do anything she wants that it's going to be this idea that he's like oh i'm gonna now bring in this new empire or and you know bring agnes into it because he did have this moment where he was talking to the previous previous skinner who was kind of like you guys have been handing down the torch for generations i couldn't even do it one time with liz yeah that at the end when we saw him circle back around to agnes and all of a sudden he's like okay now i'm going to be the new skinner now i'm getting the task force back together i have something that's motivating me again it just kind of hurts my heart a little bit that that agnes doesn't if this is what he's doing that agnes doesn't have her own destiny in front of her she doesn't get to make any of her choices that she's going to be sort of brought along the same route that liz was on just by being born and you know and it sucks it, it sucks if agnes is gonna be put somehow in this position and i i don't know when they're gonna even show agnes but it almost doesn't matter because you know if reddington he's gonna impact agnes indirectly mm -hmm. even if he's not there impacting her directly and that's why there's an inherent recklessness to being like all right i'm gonna be the new skinner now i'm gonna get these new people around me in a and a new tattoo oh yeah and a new <laughs> tattoo which by the way Get a cooler tattoo, Reddington. I'm just saying, can you get like an S that's like, I don't know, inside of a dragon that's like breathing fire or Is something? Is that cooler? I, listen, I don't have any tattoos. And... The S was on fire. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. It's, <laughs> it's cool enough, Reddington, but it's just like, why? You've had two years to go and associate yourself with somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, Agnes has been out there this past mm -hmm. couple of years as well. Like, 
I don't know if there's some light bulb that went off when you got inside the Skinner organization. I don't know if you've had something on your bucket list that for whatever reason you didn't feel like doing. It just, there's something else on your mind, Reddington, and I want to know what it is. I just hope that uh, it's not about Agnes and Reddington is doing something for himself because he sacrificed for 30 years his life. Yeah. For Liz. Liz is no longer here. He has had time to grieve. I'd like to see Reddington do something for himself. That if he wants to be the Skinner because he truly just enjoys crime and he enjoys being the head of an empire, that this is now something he's going to do for himself. I don't want to watch sort of a rinse and repeat of Liz except now take out Liz, put in Agnes, same story. If this gets Reddington some of his cohorts back, then I will be... A okay with it. Uh, give give me Brimley and the goat. Give me Paula. Like give me yes, some... Paula. We we all need some of these people back in the world of the show. Maybe this is a way to do that. But I think you know the Reddington stuff in this episode is great. Always is with Reddington. But I I I liked some of the stuff with Reddington and the other characters as well. We kind of got to see him interact a little bit more with the task force again. Yeah, we also got to see him sort of. I guess kind of have a little bit of like not romance we saw him kiss alberta which was kind of like a <laughs> i'll trade you if you give me this kiss i was like what is happening here but i guess if you i got raymond <laughs> reddington in front of you you'd be like i'm gonna shoot my shot <laughs> hey listen alberta she, she, alberta was the uh she was like the person who played like five minutes in a basketball game and she took like 20 shots over the court. alberta was going for it in this episode yeah there was yeah, there was a lot of just weirdness around Reddington in general. Yeah, because we also need to talk about sort of his new right hand woman, Ouija. So I had said in the premiere that I I'm not on board yet with her. I think it may take a couple episodes. I just found her being very condescending towards Cooper in the first episode. And now she's being condescending towards Dembe, where he's kind of like, hey, if you need to know uh, some of the things that Raymond needs or that he likes or whatever. And she's like, I know what he needs. It's like, you've been there a minute. Dembe's yeah. been there with him for like over a decade. Like maybe it's okay to not be rude to everybody and take the information. Just because you know how to shave Reddington's head with some sort of hand. And other things. What was that? <laughs> yeah, it was, there was a little bit of sort of this implication maybe that maybe something's going on or has happened romantically he threw this out there that he like watches her in undress out on the balcony in the morning shaving her legs and i'm just like is this relationship intimate or is it just he happened to be walking by or is everybody freewheeling having a good time it doesn't matter maybe reddington learned some stuff at that monastery he went to like uh, this, do we call this a cohort with benefits <laughs> yeah we got to figure out so I, I i don't know i'm curious i'm curious i'm curious about that i'm curious about you know the, there was that moment with reddington in park where he kind of suggested that she's got some like extracurricular activities yeah i'm very curious about that this episode so did well and sort of starting to dangle some mysteries out there which is what i was missing from the premiere but they're stepping up now they're bringing in some mysteries yeah i i liked a lot of the okay here is something we can pay off later here's something else we can pay off later you know we have also full brooding wrestler at this point who is very, very sad. I felt for Wrestler when he was in Liz's office. Oh, yeah. I felt really bad for him. We saw him holding pills, which we don't know what they're for. They could be for depression. They could be for anxiety. We don't know yeah. what they're for. But there was a really nice scene at the end where he was sitting in Liz's office. Dembe came in and... I'm not sure if he exactly offered him sort of spiritual healing to like help him in that kind of way, but he definitely sort of offered 
friendship and you know a shoulder if he needs it or help in any kind of way and i thought that was really nice i think that they are very similar in a lot of ways and they do want to do the right thing and sometimes they have to do the wrong thing to do the right thing and they are very similar that way i really like that dembe said that he was the reason that he wanted to be an agent there's just I'm here for this bromance. Do we, what do we call this? Do we call this Dessler? Do we call it Rimbe? No, let's, don't call, let's not call it Rimbe. We're no, calling no, no, it Dessler. Dessler. Dessler wins, everybody. I know, get your bread out of that. Okay, now I'm talking to all you people. No, okay. De I almost said it again. Okay. What if the what if the name we're calling this would be a Dessler? I, I have put myself in a calamity, everyone. No, Dessler listen this will be i really like the two of them there's something really cool about this friendship that's budding i really do too Dessler. Dessler, you said it. it they they are similar no you said it okay no they they really there's something about how they are they have a commonality i know yeah, we're gonna be do. giggling in the back of our head about this for the rest of the video but no they, they have a common bond where i think they have a code and we don't have a lot yeah. of people on this show who really have a code because mm -hmm. reddington's code was just basically you know protect liz at all costs but mm -hmm. he was fine to you know kill rob steal do almost anything else and mm -hmm. i think i i just think that there's something there that can be explored more and in general yeah. they're really giving dembe a lot more material this season i think it's you know we've lost the cast members so i think they're just sort of like okay every other person's gonna get to step up to the plate a little mm -hmm. bit more it doesn't feel like they're just shoehorning someone else in full time yet yeah i mean i don't know if they're planning on bringing on another sort of female lead but right now i mean the task force is all men and park yeah it's a little <laughs> the, the balance is a little bit sort of weird i will say that much about yeah. it also okay there's a couple of things i gotta be somewhat critical about in this episode i i love love i'm not i'm not being critical of love the blacklist hasn't always done love well but I could care less about Park's husband. I'm sorry, Peter. It's just like, I, I do not care about you. I am not invested in this relationship at all. No, I think that they maybe made a misstep by not introducing all of us to Peter. So that when they were sort of doing the like, oh, let's catch up with everybody in the premiere. We saw Park doing this sort of training thing. And it would have been... I think maybe more helpful to yeah. see Peter and to see their relationship and see the bond, the chemistry, that sort of stuff. So that now we would be deeper invested in it. That if she is going down this path to divorce, yeah. that we would care more about it. Yeah. And like, I wish I even cared more about some of the case of the week elements here. I know it got to an interesting place with Reddington being the Skinner, like, that is fascinating. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I don't know if I was that fascinated by some of the stuff along the way, because I feel like we've seen the, here's a kidnapping crisis, we must solve the kidnapping crisis. Yeah. yeah. It's been like a 200 times we've seen that storyline on this show. Yeah, we, we have, we have. But it had payoff. This episode had really good payoff by the end. I think we can now officially say something that has been in my dream board for the entirety of this series. We? Rickman on yours reddington <laughs> is now a pirate oh, pirate reddington oh, oh, oh. has entered the chat everyone i didn't know where you were going with that that is on your dream board prepare yourselves mateys this listen this is almost one of the greatest things that the blacklist could give it is it is a late birthday <laughs> gift for me i will cherish it i will appreciate it, it it's pretty good it almost makes up for the fact that you guys screwed up the finale and made us angry for like three months. I do hope that with Raymond now being the Skinner, that some of the characters we met like Alberta will come back again because she was really like interesting, hard woman. Like I I kind of liked strange. She reminds me kind of of a Raymond Reddington. Alberta's something else. Alberta's fight. Give us more Alberta. I really like her. Okay, well, let's. Did you guys love Alberta? What did you like about this episode? Are you higher on season nine now than you were in the premiere? I am. 
I am too. It felt yeah. more like we got the sort of fun, spirited Reddington who is an man of adventure. Yeah, I was really missing the mysteries. I mean, the first eight seasons were like mystery after mystery after mystery. And I'm not talking about like the, the blacklister of the week. I'm just talking about like the stuff that we were all talking about here with you guys yeah. the whole time. All the different theories and what's going on and how, you know, what could be happening. The premiere didn't really give us a lot of that. But this episode is starting to go in that direction, and I really enjoyed it. Let us know if you guys enjoyed it, and hit that subscribe button. We'll, of course, have more Blacklist coverage on the way, including a preview for yep. episode three. Yep. Give this video a like. Check out our other coverage, Succession, coming this weekend, and we will see you here next time.